Honda Civic Type R needs no introduction. It's undoubtedly one of Britain's favourite hot hatches, as it has been ever since its launch in the late 90s. From the earliest EK9 to the EP3 and later FN2, various iterations of the Type R have stood head and shoulders above the competition. And while combustion cars may be approaching the end of their road, there will always be a place in an enthusiast's heart for a ferocious front wheel drive hot hatch. When it launched in 2017, the FK8 looked markedly different from its predecessor, the FK2, with an even sharper and more dramatic design. This was to be no shrinking violet, with a huge wing, splitter and aero effects all screaming, look at me. Today, the FK8 continues to impress, boasting huge power, scalpel sharp handling and a healthy dose of hooliganism. And for 2021, it has seen a subtle refresh with this GT model receiving redesigned fog light surrounds, new air intake styling blades, a 13% larger grille opening and a bold new racing blue. And that grown grille isn't just for looks either. In fact, it's a direct response to the Type R overheating on track and Honda claims a 10 degree drop in coolant temperature as a result. To counteract the aerodynamic loss this incurs, the front bumper air dam has been made deeper and more rigid with tiny ridges to better direct airflow. Under the contoured bonnet sits a VTEC 2.0-litre turbocharged inline-4 of its predecessor. And through those 20-inch front wheels, it puts out 320 PS at 6,500 RPM and peak torque of 400 Newton meters, available all the way from 2,500 to 4,500 RPM. The rush response is immediate and acceleration explosive sending the Type R rocketing from 0 to 62 miles an hour in a tyre scrabbling 5.8 seconds. Honda claims it then goes all the way to 169 miles an hour, but for obvious reasons we can't exactly attest to this. The steering feels perfectly precise and direct through those driven front wheels, while the steering wheel becomes increasingly heavier as you progress from comfort to sport and later R modes. Two-piece brake discs replace the previous single-piece unit, while 15mm of dead travel has been removed from the brake pedal. The result is sharper and more immediate stopping power than the Type R has ever seen before. Revised suspension geometry makes for a more responsive and sharper drive than any Type R that has come before it, which in turn means better braking stability and reduced roll. In short, it inspires you to brake later and corner faster, really pushing the limits of what this car can do. Adaptive damping, meanwhile, on all four corners, evaluates road conditions 10 times faster than that of its predecessor. And all of this combines to make for a drive so focused and so succinct that it is really hard to gauge just how fast you're going. Three modes, Comfort, Sport and R+, offer driving styles for various situations, with distinct adjustment to the adaptive dampers, the steering force, the gear shift feel and the throttle response. However, none of those are afraid to let rip when you put your foot down. R+, mode lights up the dash, egging you on and unleashing hell through the front tyres. Optimise everything conspires to make this a track-worthy weapon but it's just as enjoyable on the open road. However, commuters may tire of the six-speed manual and the full clutch, especially when idling in heavy traffic. Sport mode, meanwhile, is the default option when starting the car, the comfortable middle ground that combines performance and drivability. Now switch into comfort and feel the wound up tension dissipate as the suspension takes on an ever so slightly softer feel and the steering wheel relaxes tangibly in your hands. 37,545. That is the exact number of FK8s that Honda built before arriving at the model you see here. And this plaque is just a gentle reminder of exactly how popular this latest iteration of the Type R has been. Now this attention to detail really continued throughout the cabin, from the Alcantara clad steering wheel to the carbon fibre trim and the bouncy bucket seats that offer a comfortable hug through even the most enthusiastic of corners. One of the best things about the updated Type R's cabin is this. 
It's a counterweighted, teardrop shaped and cold to the touch gear shift into which a significant proportion of R&D has gone. Now the result is well worth our appreciation. Unfortunately in this model it does catch a little bit as you pull it into gear but I'm sure that is a result of the enthusiastic hand through which this test model has already passed. And there's one other minor irritation that has really been getting on my nerves in my time in the Type R and it's the strange loose trim like buzzing that arises around 3000 revs. Regardless of gear speed or driving conditions it's omnipresent and once you've focused on it it's hard to forget. Otherwise, the centre console and dash are neat and uncluttered, with the modes activated via this easy rocker switch. However, and depending on people's priorities here, this could be a hugely off-putting factor, but the infotainment and onboard systems are absolutely ancient. While you may argue that your average purist Type R driver wouldn't necessarily care at the slightly older infotainment system, the Type R seriously lags behind its competitors in this respect. Sure, you have 320 PS and the R Plus mode at your disposal, but the 7 inch TFT display, which hosts the infotainment system, is crying for an update. In an odd juxtaposition, however, there is wireless charging on this GT model and connectivity to the Honda Logger app, which allows you to analyse your driving data. In the cabin, there's also blind spot information, dual zone climate control, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and an 11 speaker audio system so it's not all ancient. There's even a funny lady to remind you to please depress the brake pedal. Please depress the brake pedal to release the parking brake. So, if you can overlook the infotainment and you're still hankering after a Type R, then it's unlikely you could compromise and consider anything else. Ultimately, it will likely boil down to whether you go for the £34,820 GT or the lower spec Sportline, which shares the same power figures and technology in a subtler body package. There was a limited edition too, but don't get too excited. The UK designation of 20 sold out within an hour of launch. The Civic Type R has been the hottest hot hatch around for a while, and this update only serves to compound that fact. It offers the ultimate in unadulterated, purest driving enjoyment. So pure in fact that Honda doesn't even offer an auto option. The mere mention of one is blasphemous. Granted, it's not for everyone. If you're looking for something with a few more creature comforts, you may well look at the Cupra Leon or the Golf R perhaps. But personally, I love this car, from its furious engine to its intricate attention-grabbing detailing. To my mind, Honda has really hit the nail on the head with this latest FK8 update. 